What's up guys, back again for another one. So something I wanna address that a lot of people ask me all the time, and some people think, you know, are you crazy? Is the fact that I am a board certified internal medicine physician. I practice as an attending for about a year, trained in New York. Currently, I am now back in my second residency and I'm doing radiology currently at the moment with the hopes of doing interventional radiology. And a lot of people ask me like, are you crazy? Like you finished one residency for three years, practice as an independent physician and attending for one year, and you decide to go back into residency. Residency, if you guys don't know, is uh, oftentimes the most miserable time of your life. You are overworked. You are constantly studying. You have pressure because you have to perform well and take exams. And it's a time when a lot of people are not happy. Residency is not a, the most happiest time. Uh, it's a time where you kind of sacrifice a lot to train in your particular field and for anyone to do it for a second time some people think i'm crazy but i'll tell you what it is it's all about the mentality when i was in internal medicine i knew that i wanted to subspecialize internal medicine residency is three years and i knew that i wanted to do some kind of subspecialty afterwards i wanted to do something in the interventional field something where i get to use my hands so really the options for me were really something like GI, but that's kind of just putting cameras and scopes and I just wasn't into that. I didn't feel like that was interventional enough. Then there was pulmonary critical care, which is kind of like bedside procedures and uh, you know placing central lines and cool procedures, but it was basically stuff that I was doing in residency anyway. Like it just didn't feel right for me. I thought about it, but I just felt like it wasn't right for me. Um, then there was interventional cardio, which I was in the match for because I felt like that was the closest to what I really felt like what I wanted to do was something called interventional radiology. Now, if you're unfamiliar with interventional radiology, essentially what it is, is it's minimally invasive surgical procedures. So you make smaller incisions to do just about big procedures, but just through smaller incisions. And basically you use your radiology training, which makes you a master at anatomy and using your anatomic skills, you're able to basically operate on patients without having to open them up. Essentially, that's what interventional radiology is. And when I was during my, when I was in my residency, and even when I became an attending, I consulted with radiology and interventional radiology a lot. So I saw the direction that radiology was going. I saw that there was a dilemma. Diagnostic radiologists and interventional radiologists are two totally different types of people. I'm not saying one is better than the other, but they're just a different mindset. So there's, as interventional radiology was progressing, interventional radiology branched off into its own residency because it felt like it needed its own residency because the skill set is just so different. Currently, I'm in a program that has, a di I'm a diagnostic resident technically, and there's a track called an early specialization in interventional radiology. I'll talk about that in another video, but basically I train diagnostic but then in my last year of residency, I get to branch out and primarily do interventional radiology and essentially do a year of my fellowship a little bit early. So there was a dilemma. I had a very good mentor in interventional radiology uh, back at my medical hospital. I basically reached out to him. I walked, I literally emailed him that I wanna speak to you because he was, you know, I was consulting with him so much on doing things for my patients like lines and, you know, different procedures. So I basically emailed him and I said, can I come talk to you in your office? He had no idea who really I, who I was really, honestly. He just thought I was just another medicine resident and why did I want to speak with him? But he was nice. He said, you know, I'm in my office right now. He emailed me back within minutes and was like, I'm in my office right now if you want to come and talk. Ne mind you, never really spoke to the guy before. I walked into his office and I basically said, hey, I was a, I was a second year. It was probably a couple of months into second year. And I said, hey, listen, this is what I'm planning on doing. I basically knocked on his door sat down in his office and told him, you know, I'm going to complete my internal medicine training, but then I'm going to further my training and go into interventional radiology. And he thought that was genius. Instead of putting me down, he was just like, are you okay to dedicate the time into it? And once I said, yes, I am, you know, okay with that. He thought it was a fantastic idea. He also wrote me a letter and here I am today. But why did I do it? That's the, that's the main question. So the reason why I did it is because of that dilemma that I talked about. I 
had some insight from residents and other radiology attendings and I saw that interventional radiology was at the cusp of branching off of diagnostic radiology because essentially it's a it's its own subspecialty and it's becoming more and more clinically focused but when you do diagnostic radiology you spend four years away from real traditional clinical practice you're reading images and you're doing uh, you're getting really good at uh, diagnostic radiology, but you're moving further and further away from clinical, traditional clinical practice. So basically, interventional radiology was at, it was like a turmoil where they were going to branch off and they wanted to become established as its own subspecialty. So I thought at that moment, someone who's already has clinical experience, three years of it plus one year of, as an attending, I feel like my skill set would be very well fitting into the field of interventional radiology, especially when it starts to branch off and becomes more clinically focused and becomes its own subspecialty. So I decided, you know what, that's what's going to make me unique and make me stand out compared to everyone else who wants to do interventional radiology because it's just a cool thing to do. So this that past match, the, the most competitive specialty was these dedicated interventional radiology spots. Because as technology is getting better, it's better for patients, it's better for, for physicians to just do minimally invasive procedures. So I knew interventional radiology has great potential, and I still feel like it has great potential. And I just decided, you know what? I'm going to treat radiology as a fellowship, as a subspecialty. So for me, I almost feel like internal medicine was not the end-all, be-all. It was just a prerequisite. I feel like it just it's just going to make me better. It's helping me on a day-to-day -day during my radiology training. It's definitely helping me whenever I do interventional radiology because obviously as a resident, you rotate through all the services, so you do interventional radiology. It's definitely helping me. And it's just a good perspective. I have good relationship with the internal medicine physicians at my hospital. They know I've trained before, and I feel like I understand the thought process, and that helps when I'm dictating my reports and definitely helps when I'm doing procedures for patients. So overall, I just, in my mind, I just think of internal medicine as a prerequisite for this specialty. And especially if interventional radiology is branching off the way it's kind of looking like it's doing, I feel like all the skills that I had and the years of training I put in, nothing went to waste. It's all going to come back and it's, it's going to help me for sure. So because of that, it's not because I dislike internal medicine or I felt like, you know, I wasn't happy. No, it wasn't that at all. I just knew that at the end of the day, the type of physician that I wanted to be, there's different types of physicians and you have to just be true to yourself and know what type of physician you want to be. I knew that I wanted to be a physician who does procedures. I didn't go into general surgery. That's a topic for another, another day. But, you know, I knew that I wanted to do some kind of procedural based specialty. And I knew that my skill set could be used for something like this. And I, I went into the match and was lucky enough to match on my first shot. Um, so I went through the match twice and matched twice and now I'm in my second residency and here we are on call today I'm on call so anyway you know if you have any other questions or thoughts let me know on what you think I just want to put it out there because there isn't that much information out there for doing two residencies but it is possible you know if you, if you play your cards just right and it is definitely possible because I'm not a superstar and I did it so if I did it you can do it Still, I don't recommend it. It's better to just go through one residency and be done. However, you know, if anything happens, X, Y, and Z, and you want to think about doing it, just know it is possible. But yeah, that's it. I mean, I should definitely be heading inside and begin my call. Let's hope I have a good night. But anyway, until next time, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys again.